Okay, so this little, uh, this short video is meant to show you how to graph um, your data, your rather not your raw data, but your statistics in Excel um, as far as bar graphs go. And something similar would happen uh, would would be needed to uh, include error bars of standard deviation for line graphs. But uh, because we've got two groups, we're going to go ahead and do that for bar graphs. Um, so we already just so you can see, um, you should watch the or know how to calculate mean and standard deviation using Excel. And that's what's calculated here. Here's my raw data uh, that comes from the document that's on Blackboard and that you were given in class. Here are the stats that were calculated. Here are the means with uh, the mean of the population that lives in the habitat with crabs and the mean for the population that lives in the habitat without crabs and the standard deviations of each of those. So in order to calculate the graph, we're going to be able to, we're going to have to graph the mean and insert error bars that are plus or minus um, standard deviation values. But as you know from your reading, one standard deviation plus or minus the mean, it, sorry, plus or minus one standard deviation of, from the mean is um, represents 68% of the data. And really to have any kind of confidence in statistics, um, our standard is going to be 95% or more um, so 68% is not really going to cut it. In order to get to 95%, we need to take two standard deviations. So we're going to multiply that standard deviation value by two to get our two standard deviation, which is going to represent 95% of our data. So understanding that one standard deviation is 68% of your data um, is something that you need to know and understand, and that two standard deviations is 95%. So let's go ahead and get started and um, try to map out our data so that when we ask Excel to graph it, it's going to make sense to it. So um, we're going to have to restructure this table um, a little differently. So what I'm going to do is um, write um, with crabs and without crabs as two different in two different rows. And we've got our mean here. We're going to put our standard deviation. And then we're going to say plus and minus. Okay, so we're going to take our mean, and I'm just going to recalculate that really quickly into um, those this cell. And you should know how to do this pretty well by now. You've done it a couple of times. We do that also um, for the population without crabs. Okay, I'm going to do that with the I'm going to calculate the standard deviation for each of these populations again. Then you can copy and paste from the previous uh, table, but it might give you some errors. So I'm just going to recalculate it because it's really easy to do. Uh, it takes only a few seconds, so it's going to save me some possible headaches later. So I'm going to make sure I do this properly. So like I said um, before, one standard deviation is 68%. So we're really going to need to have error bars that are plus two standard deviations and minus two standard deviations. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put in, um, copy the standard deviation function two more times into the plus and the minus. Um, so I will be able to tell the computer to go plus or minus a certain number of standard deviations. So we'll do that really quickly. Um, again, only takes a few seconds. So we're going to do this probably, and I'm sure there's a shorter way to do this, but um, with the new versions of Excel, this is the, the easiest way that I found to be able to do this. So let's do this um, again. I'm doing this again for the minus um, and uh, sorry for both populations. So all in all we've calculated standard deviation six times um, but we have um, our data in new cells. So what we're going to do here is um, make a note that this plus or minus actually represents one standard deviation. So we actually need to multiply this by two and let's see if we can we just I'm going to adding parentheses around the formula adding an asterisk which is a multiplication symbol for Excel 
multiplying it by 2, so it's two standard deviations, and clicking enter. So it multiplies this standard deviation value by 2. Okay? Um, and we'll do the same thing below. Um, and we did the same thing here, okay, and we'll do it once again. And one last time. Oops. And there's some other shortcuts in case you know how to use them. Go ahead and do that. But um, this has given me some uh, some useful information. So now I've got all the data and information I need to be able to graph. So I'm going to go ahead and click on or select with and without crabs and my mean values and go to insert. And I want a a bar graph and pick the first choice here and so now I've got my mean values of the shell thickness for with crabs and without crabs now there are a couple things that are obviously required of graphs that are missing here so we're gonna go ahead and insert those before I add in the error bars so I'm gonna go to my layout um, I'm gonna add a chart title I'm gonna put it above the chart and um, you're going to have, need to follow the IB requirements, but I'm not looking at those right now, so I'm going to make it something that I feel is detailed and um, meets the needs of our um, of, of sharing what this data represents. So we're going to I'm going to label this shell sorry shell thickness. It's up here. Shell thickness millimeters of Litterina obtusata. In different habitats. Well, let's say in habitats with and without crabs. All right, so obviously that's a long title. Um, we can manipulate that a little later, but make sure we have a title or a location for a title, and that's how you add one. We also go up here where it, uh, in layout, um, we want to add axes labels. So we want to put title below. We can write down habitat for our x axis. And for our y axis, I'm going to do a rotated title to shell thickness in millimeters. Okay? So we've got our habitat and our shell thickness. Um, I'm going to delete the series label. So um, we've got most of the requirements here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out a little bit so it's a little bigger. It's a little more useful to us. Um, and then we need to add in the error bar. So if we click on this chart, on the chart again, we go to um, format, excuse me, layout, click on error bars. We're going to more error bar options. Even though there says one here, error bars with standard deviation, um, it does, it's, Excel is not able to calculate our standard deviation by using this bar graph because we only put in one data point for each bar. Um, and so it's very difficult. It, Excel doesn't understand or it's, it isn't able to for whatever reason. It's not programmed to read all of these data points and calculate standard deviation from that. If we went with standard deviation, it would calculate one value and apply the same error bars to each of our data sets. And as we know, when we calculated standard deviation using the calculator or Excel, the standard error, sorry, the standard deviation was not the same for each group. And, the, and so we need to make sure that the data that we graph is not the same uh, numbers for the error bar. So I'm going to click on more error bar options. Um, there are several options here I could go with both above and below the mean, just below the mean or above the mean. We want both to show error that's um, on either side of our mean and we want a cap. We don't want fixed value but rather we're going to go to custom. Standard deviation is going to be that one standard, error, standard deviation value that we don't want. We want it to differentiate between the different groups. So we're going to go to custom and specify value. Now our positive error value, we're going to go and click on this gray button and we're going to go and, count and select both of these values for with and without crabs. 
and click on the gray button. And the negative value, we're going to go to the minus value, which are the same numbers anyway. So if we click OK, we can see now on our graph, if we close this out, our standard deviation error bars are of different um, are of different lengths. And if we look at our data again, we know that our data without crabs has a standard deviation of 0.15, and our standard deviation of with crabs is 0.09. So we know our standard deviation, or the spread of data around the mean for the population without graphs, is far greater than the spread around the mean of the population in the environment with crabs. So the data for the uh, shells in the environment with crabs is much narrower, it's much more fine, it's more precise. Um, but the data for the shell thickness in the environment without crabs is more all over the place, so we have a larger standard deviation. And we're looking at this graph, we actually see that the error bars are overlapping. Um, and that tells us a little bit about the range of data. So if we're looking at the means, um, we could be misled. When we actually look at the standard deviations, it gives us a, a bit more information, which is quite interesting, and I'll leave that up to you to interpret.